Hi everyone, I'm Pat from the Sewing Studio Fabric Superstore and today I'm going to instruct you on the embroidery side of your brand new Brother Stellar XJ1 sewing and embroidery machine. For this video I'm going to be using the Brother XJ1 but everything I cover here also applies to the Baby Lock Altair sewing and embroidery machine and the Brother Stellar XE1 and Baby Lock Meridian embroidery only machines. In this video, I'm going to go over the embroidery accessories that come with these machines, how to customize your embroidery settings, the embroidery editing features of these machines, and other important points to get you embroidering on your Brother XJ1 and XE1 or Baby Lock Altair and Meridian in no time. So let's get started. Okay, now let's go over the embroidery accessories that come with your machine. So first of all, we have three hoops with your little reference stickers that always must be visible when you want to use your app. So it comes with a four by four, a five by seven, and then the big one, the nine and a half by 14. And while we're looking at the hoops, I wanna point out that on the inside and outside, on the inner hoop and outer hoop of all three sizes, you have a little arrow. So always make sure that the arrow, when you hoop your inner hoop inside, is pointing up and matching up to the top and not the bottom. Okay, so with those hoops come the grid for each one for easier placement, guidance in placement. Okay, let me put these to one side and we'll go over some of the other accessories that come with the machine. We have the embroidery foot. So always make sure that when you attach this to your machine, this is where you would attach it, that you plug in your extension here into the port that's on the back of your machine. This makes your machine aware of the fact that you have your embroidery foot on. So what's next? We have a little embroidery needle plate cover. So what do you need this for? Once in a long while, you may find that you have an issue with maybe some looping on your, the top of your embroidery once in a while. If that happens, it's possible that you may need to put this on your uh, machine on top of your plate. So you would attach this. It's got two little prongs on the back side, and you would just snap this on to your machine and then you'll be embroidering over this. So this goes underneath your fabric attached to your machine if you're having an issue with looping. Okay, next we have a little spacer. So you can see here that it's exactly the size of a bobbin. So why, why would we want to use this? So if you were to use, these machines use class 15 bobbins. Let's talk about bobbins for one second. So the bobbins that come with your machine are class 15 and they are higher than an L class bobbin. So let me just get one out and I'll show you. I'm going to compare them for you so you understand bobbins and you always use the right bobbin. So this is a class 15 pre-wound bobbin. Can you see how high that is or how fat that is? This is an L class bobbin. This is more, can you see that it's not as high? So this is generally what we use in the multi-needles. Now, if you were to want to use this on your, um, embroidery machine, you would have to use the spacer. So the spacer, when you attach it to your bobbin, actually makes it the height of your class 15 bobbin. We always use um, the pre-wound bobbins. I never have actually used my spacer on my machine, but um, that's up to you. We sell these box, these tubes of pre-wound bobbins by Clear Glide. It's 60 weight thread. These are very popular, the Filtech. Now, having said that, with your machine comes a spool of 60 weight bobbin thread. 
So moving along here, we have two bobbin cases. The standard bobbin case is what comes in your machine. So take a look at this. I'm going to turn it over on its side because I want you to see that on the side of it here is a little green dot. So this is the bobbin case that comes in your machine. This is your standard bobbin case for everyday embroidery and sewing. So very clear, the green dot, right? So this bobbin case, you should not adjust the tension on this one. This is set for embroidery and sewing. The second bobbin case, which is the what I would call the alternate bobbin case, has a purple dot in the center. It's an alternate bobbin case for using with heavier or more difficult to embroider threads. So generally you would keep this one in, your green dot, and not adjust the tension. This one, if you look at the side, it does not have that little dab of paint over the screw. So this one, if you want, on your alternate bobbin case, you can adjust the tension on this one. Okay, so let's move along a little bit here now. So next, you'll find that there's several sheets of embroidery positioning markers. These are to be used with the app for positioning embroidery designs in a specific place. This here, this sheet is called a lens calibration sheet. So when you first start using your app and it asks you to calibrate your camera, this is the sheet that you're going to be using to calibrate your device or your camera in order for it to accurately send over um, pictures to your machine. Now I'm going to show you how to customize the embroidery settings. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're on our home screen here. I'm going to select the little piece of paper and I am going to travel actually, or I can just select here and it takes me to page seven. And this is where I can customize this machine to embroidery. Again, you don't have to change things around in here. Every time you embroider, you can leave it at default, but I really want you to understand and know what you can do with this machine. So the very first thing that comes up here is your embroidery frame display. And you can toggle through, you can see I've got it selected at nine and a half by 14. That's the largest hoop that comes with this machine. But as you scroll through eight by 12, the, all of these sizes of um, hoop are available for this machine. They don't all come with a machine though. But let's keep going. So say, say I wanted to use um, my eight by eight hoop. I would leave it selected at eight by eight. And now the next um, selection down below says grid right now. I'm gonna tell my machine, these are my options. If I wanted to divide my, my screen in four, I could, or I could select just a center point, or I could select a 3 8 inch grid or one inch grid. I'll leave it at one inch. And now I'm just gonna to touch okay. And I'm gonna to go to embroidery and I want to show you, well, let's just select a little Santa here and set it. And you can see here what comes up on my screen other than my embroidery is I've got a one inch grid because I set it in the custom settings. And I also have an outline here of my eight by eight hoop. So clearly when I pull up my design, I know that it'll fit in my eight by eight, but this is just a visual for me to know how, how my design will sit in my hoop. It's not gonna prevent me from moving it out of the way out of that hoop size. However, if I do move it out of that hoop size, when I move forward towards embroidery, the machine will stop me and say, no, no, you can't. That's out of the hoop frame. Um, you cannot use the eight by eight hoop for this. Okay, let's go back 
to my settings and I'm going to go ahead and leave this, I'm gonna change this to the blank. Now watch what happens. Now I've got a blank screen. I have to say that unless I'm doing math and I want to position designs in a certain place, I don't usually have a grid set up on my screen. I find it's very busy, but now you can see even clearer. There's my eight by eight and I can actually use my stylus to just drag around. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna set this machine back. Can you see all the increments? I'm gonna set it back to nine and a half by 14. So traveling down the screen here, I've got thread color and thread brand. So generally, most embroiderers set their machines for name of color and not thread brand. So when I select name of color as opposed to the color number of a brand, what happens is when I select a design over here, it tells me um, candy tan, white, vermilion, goldenrod, black, green. That's how I like it. I like it to know what the name of the color is as opposed to the machine coming up and saying to me, Isocord number 3456. So generally we will have a lot of embroidery thread in our stash. And generally what I do is I'll grab the yellow or the green and it may be a different brand. So again, you know, that's up to you whether you, if you want to be specific to a brand, this is where you would tell the machine what brand you want. And you've got a selection in here, the paste setter from Brother or Iris Thread, Floriani, and then it'll tell you the name of the color. And then you have to set this to one, two, three. In other words, select your brand and then select that you want the number of that brand. I'm going to put the machine back to name of color because we have all of our machines set at that. Okay, this is an important setting. Maximum embroidery speed is 1,050. Remember the black box is your factory setting. If you want to embroider on a thick towel, I always, always, always bring my speed down. If you're making a pouch in the hoop or, you know, you want to slow your machine down a little bit and this is where you would do it. You can bring it all the way down to 350 stitches per minute and all the way up to 1,050. Your embroidery tension is here. So this is your embroidery tension for your top thread, um, which is, would be your color. So if you, when you start embroidering, if you see that your bobbin thread is pulling up on, onto the top of your embroidery and it's visible on embroidery, um, what you would do is stop your machine and you could come in here and just loosen it. Sometimes when I embroider with metallic thread, I always slow my machine down and then I'll come up here and loosen my tension a little bit. And then remember to put it back to factory setting. And actually up here, this little box, when I touch this, it asks me, is it okay to restore the default settings? I'm going to say, okay. So if I've changed different settings on this page, this will restore all of them. Okay, so embroidery tension. Next, you have your embroidery foot height. So just like in sewing that you can adjust your presser foot height or free motion foot height, you can adjust your embroidery foot height. If you find that you're embroidering on something that's really thick and your foot is dragging, maybe, or pulling your fabric, you can, plus means you're raising your foot height more and you have several increments but then always remember when you're done with that project to bring it back or restore your factory settings on that page. Okay, next page eight. Embro oh, up here, inches or metric. Generally, we all immediately on page eight switch our machine to inches. I know I do, that, but that's a personal choice. Your embroidery background color this really isn't that important to me, but what this does is if you select it and you are partial to the color purple, what it does is that instead of your main um, sewing or embroidery area here, instead of it being white, it changes the color. It's kind of just a fun thing. I 
don't do that. Um, I like to leave it at white. So you, I'm gonna go back to white. And then the next selection changes your thumbnail background color. Okay, thumbnail size, I always put mine on large. I think the default of the machine is small. So normally I come in here and select large. Your embroidery basting distance. This machine, when you're in embroidery, has a feature where you can baste around your embroidery design so your tension is um, perfect. It really helps with tension and decreases puckering. When we get into the features of the machine, I'll talk about this a little bit more. But basically what it does is as you press plus, it moves your basting distance from your design to your basting outline further away. And then also the embroidery applique distance, you can move that further away. And again, when I show you those features in the embroidery section of the machine, we'll talk about that. Your embroidery foot with the LED pointer adjustment, we'll address that in a little bit when I show you embroidery. And then page nine is your wireless LAN enable. In other words, this machine is um, a Wi-Fi machine. I would follow the, it's actually very simple to do this. Um, you would switch it on. If you want to use your app, you switch your wireless LAN enable on and then you connect it to the Wi-Fi in your house. So you follow the steps. The machine name is Sewing Machine 195. If you wanna change the machine and call it Mickey Mouse, you can. You can call it whatever you want and you would do it here. But when you download the app and use your app, it's going to look for Sewing Machine 195. So this is fairly simple. I would refer to your manual or we can help you with that. Um, but this is connecting your machine to Wi-Fi and your and obviously you would connect your phone to the same Wi-Fi or to your computer. So now let's talk about setting up your machine for embroidery. This machine already has the embroidery unit attached, but I wanted to let you know that when you go to attach or detach your embroidery unit to your machine, you should have the machine off switched off always when you attach or detach your embroidery arm make sure your machine is off there's a little clip towards the end it's very easy to attach and detach it there's a little clip towards the end that you can pull and hold when you go to detach it so that it comes off very very easily okay so once you have your embroidery arm attached you can go ahead and switch your machine on the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my screen and I'm going to select embroidery. So you'll see down here, there's a little button that says always press when removing the embroidery unit. So what that does, and I'm going to touch it right now so you can see, is that it moves the arm, the embroidery arm that holds your hoop over to the left for you to be able to storage it. But what it also does is it moves the arm over to the left so I can have easier access to come under here to engage my embroidery foot. And also know that if you were to select sewing right now, you can leave your embroidery arm attached to your machine and it will um, move your arm over so you can actually sew with your embroidery arm attached. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to touch that little button and it says the carriage of the embroidery unit will move. Keep your hands away. And so it moves it over. And now I have better access to being able to put my foot on easier. So I'm going to use my multi-position screwdriver. I have my embroidery foot here. I've loosened my screw enough. I'm going to just loosen it a little bit more and I am going to attach my embroidery foot. Tighten the screw. 
Tighten it a little bit more with my multi-position screwdriver. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it in to the little port in the back. Let's see here. Okay, there we go. It's plugged in. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just come over to my embroidery screen. I'm going to go into category 12. I just want to select an embroidery design. So now the arm moves back into place and is ready for me to put my hoop on. So I have my hoop with my fabric and my stabilizer. I'm going to lift this little lever and I'm going to very carefully slide my hoop straight under my foot. Put my little arm underneath here, under the lever. And I always recommend that you put your finger back here to hold this little gray arm. As you slide this in, you don't want this to shift back. So just hold it there, lock your lever down. If you happen to shift this gray section back a little bit, when you go to select your embroidery design, it will fix itself, but I always like to have it not move when I load my hoop. Now I'm going to show you how to hoop your stabilizer and fabric. So in front of me, I have a five by seven hoop and I want to show you how cool this little multi-position screwdriver is that comes with your machine. Here it says number one, so you can set it at number one. If you swivel it, to number two, you can actually, if it's more comfortable for your hand to use it there, you can swivel it to that side. Now there's a third position at the end. It says number three here. If you swivel it all the way in and lock it in, here on this end, you can see that now I have the little screwdriver in there. Why am I showing you this? Because I can use this now to put over the screw on my hoop to help me loosen my screw or tighten my screw. So really, really handy little multi-position screwdriver. Okay, so let's keep going with the hooping. So normally I take my hoop and I have the screw down towards me and I'll bring it over to the edge of my table so that I can easily loosen and tighten. So I want to loosen it a little bit don't loosen it too much. Just loosen it what you feel is enough to um, be able to hoop your fabric. So loosen it a little bit. And of course we need to pop our inner hoop out. And then I have a piece of stabilizer here and my fabric on top. I'm gonna go ahead and lay it over my hoop. And I always have the arm of my hoop to the left. So now I'm going to, I always start at the top and I will push in the top of my hoop and then come down here. And if you feel like you have not loosened it enough, don't force it. If you feel like your inner hoop here is bowing up, sometimes that can happen with your longer or larger hoops. You want to make sure that that doesn't happen because that means that your outer hoop is too tight and it's forcing this up. And so you don't want to damage your hoop. So always make sure that it fits nice. And actually that's went in there quite tight. Once you've got your fabric in there, you can come back and just tighten it a little bit. This screw actually angles up a little bit so I could do it on top of the table. So there we have a nice tight piece of fabric ready for the embroidery machine. Now I'm going to show you the embroidery editing features on this machine. So I'm on my home screen and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select embroidery. And right away, I have a screen full of wonderful embroidery categories. So behind every one of these selections or categories, our design. So if I select that, I can scroll down. If I want to go back, I can select that. More designs, return. So I'm going to come down to category 10 and select 
this wonderful, pretty bunch of flowers. So right away when I select it, it throws up the embroidery design on my editing screen, so to speak. And right away, the machine is telling me that the height of this embroidery design is 5.35 and the width is 4.57. It's telling me that there's 14,936 stitches that come together for this design. It's 27 minutes long and 13 thread changes. Down here, I have the option of darkening my screen if I want. I always keep mine light, so normally I don't change that. Down here, it's telling me um, the color, the order of the colors and how long it's gonna take. And right away, I can tell that I left in my custom settings, I didn't leave it at name of color because I'm seeing numbers. So I'm quickly gonna come up here and I'm gonna tell my machine, see here, thread color? I'm gonna tell it, I don't want a number. I want the name of the color. So right away now, I this is what I like, light blue, sky blue, light blue. So there it is. And you can always, whenever you see this, you can scroll down. So now I have two options on the bottom. I can cancel or I can set. I can also mirror image if I want it to point in the other direction. So generally on this machine, on the bottom left of your screen, you, you're either canceling or returning or adding. And the bottom right, generally, you're moving forward towards finishing your embroidery. So I like what I see. I'm gonna go ahead and set it. So here's my design again. And whenever you pull in a design, it always puts it in the center of your um, screen here or of your embroidery hoop. Up here, I still have the sizes. I can magnify it if I want, 125%. I'm gonna bring it back to 100%. It's telling me what hoops I can use up here. I also have another magnifier here and I can magnify it even more. So open and, and select the button so that you can see what it does. This is a really cool feature that I use a lot. This little needle, with a um, pointer on it. If you select that and you press start, this is called a stitch simulator. So the machine is gonna show you the order in which it's going to stitch out that design. And you can see that it's coming together. If I'm embroidering on a project where I think, you know what, I would love to see what it's gonna stitch out and how it's gonna stitch it out, I use my stitch simulator quite a lot. This is my speed control, so I can actually speed it up here. And then when you're done, you can just say, okay. So I went to that stitch simulator through this. Okay, so this is my, my stitch out here. If I wanted to add something I could add, I could delete. Um, but what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna open up my edit screen. Edit means change. So when I open this up, some of the um, selections are grayed out. It's grayed out because the machine is telling me these are not an option. And most of the ones that are grayed out are editing features for fonts. But I still have a lot of features that I can use. So if I was to select size, this machine has recalculating software built into it. So if I was to select this, which I do every time I go into size, I select this. It's gonna ask you, is it okay to reset the pattern to its original size, angle, and position? Always say okay to that. See, now it's selected. When I select this, I can size this design up to 200%. Most machines can only do it 20% up and 10% down. Why? Because they don't have recalculating software. Recalculating software means that as the machine sizes your design up, it's adding stitches. It's adding the appropriate amount of stitches for that design so that there's not empty space in that design and it's not distorting the design. So this is a really high-end feature on this machine, but always remember to select this button to the right is like a zigzag. If you were to leave it selected on the left, 
the, act, the recalculating software is not going to be um, activated. So it'll only allow you to go up 20% and down 10. So I just get into the habit of always touching that. So these are your sizing. If I wanted to bring it down to 60%, look at how many increments I have. It's fabulous. So you can decide what size you want. And as it's calculating, it's throwing up the measurements up here right away so that you know. If you want to reset it to the original size, just touch. Whenever you see an empty white square, that's a reset. This here is to move it. So I can move it around my screen or I can use my stylus and drag it around. If I want to bring it back to the center of my hoop or my screen, you can just touch the center button and it repositions it in the center. Okay, so sizing, again, very user friendly. If I want to move, I can move. If I want to rotate, I can rotate it 10 degrees. I've got a reset button. I can reset it back to how it was before. I can mirror image it. This I use a lot. That little double square, what it does, is that it duplicates your embroidery design. So now you can become really creative. So watch this. When I touch that design, it throws a red box around that design. If I touch this one, it throws a red box around that one. So if I wanted to size or move this one or edit this one, I just touch it, and then the editing features are for that design. So now I can be creative. Maybe I want to size this one down. And now I want to touch this one and size it down. So a lot of fun. Have fun with your machine and touch the buttons and see what they do. OK, so when I'm done sizing, I can touch OK. And now moving down here, I can adjust the density on the design. I generally leave the density at 100%. Density means how many stitches are in there. If you want to add more stitches, you can, it's going to make your design thicker is what it's going to do. You can add more density. Um, generally, as I say, I leave, I don't touch my density unless I feel like I'm having a problem with that design. Okay, so the next one is, um, it's called connection, border connect. And I am going to go ahead and delete this one so that I can show you. Let me move this back to the center. I'm going to open this up. This actually re really is a cool feature. I'm going to move my design up. Can you see what opened up on my window here, so to speak? It automatically selects vertically. So if I have a design selected here, which I do, and I want to add to the bottom, watch what happens. I did plus to the bottom. It added another or duplicated the design, but it lined it up perfectly underneath. So I know I have room to add another one. And then I could center it and move it over to the side. Now, I also have the option. This screen, actually, there's a lot of things and buttons here that you can play with for connecting. And I'm not going to go over that right now in this piece of video. But what you can do here is if I select horizontally, I can now add to the right. So can you see it automatically duplicated what was on the left? And these here are for stretching. See how it stretches them apart? If I select vertically again, I can separate them more. So again, this is a button here that you should go in and play and see what it does. Um, so I actually right now am going to delete what I have on the screen. And I'm going to quickly select something else. Maybe I'm going to come into category. 13 and I selected a little hippo. I'm going to open up my edit again. This, so we just talked about this button for doing continuous embroidery and lining up your designs. This 
is your applique selection. So what the machine is doing, I'm gonna magnify it a little bit, is that it added a satin stitch around my design for me to be able to stitch a patch. Maybe I wanna put this on a purse or on a hat or something. So that's a, a really, it's a really cool feature. Um, so that's the little crest here. Now, down here on the bottom of my screen, I have an undo. Undo means if I touch that, it goes one step back and it undoes the last step that I did. This button is a redo. It puts it back. So undo, which I did want to undo because I want to quickly show you another really cool feature. I'm going to add and I'm going to come into my frames. These are all tabs that have fonts, monograms, frames. I'm going to select a frame. I think I'm going to select the rectangle. Once you select the shape that you want, you can select the stitch out that you want. And as you can see, there's a lot of stitch outs. I just want a very plain stitch out. I just want to keep it very plain. And you can see now that I have a rectangular frame. I'm going to go to my edit. There's a reason why I'm showing you this. I'm getting to it. I'm going to size up my frame until it's just big enough around my little design. I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to go back to this applique stitch. And so it reads what my last design or element I put up there was. And now the satin stitch for my patch is a rectangle instead of having an applique around my hippo. So very cool little feature. I'm going to undo and undo, undo. And I'm going to come back to my thread library. Oops, I selected the wrong one. So right in the beginning when you're learning to use your machine, I probably would not venture into this right away, but I want to show you this really cool feature. The reason why I say this is because you could get a little confused, but this is a color shuffling feature. And you know, sometimes when you select a design, it's hard to visualize it in another color. So this is what color shuffling is all about. When I select it, it tells me this design has four colors and these are the four colors. What colors do you want me to shuffle? So the machine has a library of colors in here. And so I may want to visualize that in soft colors. So I selected soft and look what happens. The machine shuffles all the soft colors that are built into the library and comes up with different combinations of colors that I may like. If I look at this and I say, you know what, I don't like any of those. I could say refresh and it shuffles more colors. I could say refresh and it shuffles more. And you can see now that I'm on page three. So maybe I like this one. So you see how the little heart fills in and maybe I like this one. So now if I still want to look at more, I can say refresh. And now I like this one. Okay, so I've selected three that I like. So now in my favorites are the three that I selected. So now I can decide from those three which one I like. I'm going to select that one and it pulls it up on my screen. I can take a look at that one or that one. See how easy it is to use. So maybe I like that one. So I'm going to set it and I'm going to say, OK, I'm coming out of my library and there it is on my screen. So pretty cool. It's a nice, nice way of being able to visualize the design in another color. Um, so now we get to this little feature. This is really, really nice. So you see what happened? I selected it looked like a little stippling feature it threw a stippling design around my embroidery design. First option that I have at the top of my hoop is what hoop do you want to use? If it's grayed out like this, 
it means that that's not an option. This hippo is larger than a six by six hoop. So I'm gonna keep selecting eight by eight. My eight by eight inch hoop would work well. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that selected. This here, the distance, I can adjust the distance and you can see what's happening on my screen is that the outline of the hippo is pushing the stippling away from the border. So I can push the distance away between my embroidery design and my stippling. Here, I can adjust the spacing of my design. I'm gonna leave it at default right now. And once I travel down the screen now, I only have two options, cancel. I don't wanna cancel. Preview, preview means I wanna see it. So there it goes. So now you can see that the distance, I was pushing this away and maybe I don't like that, right? And maybe I think the stippling is too small. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring my distance back closer. And I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my spacing on my stippling so it's bigger. Now I touch preview. I can preview and look at it as many times as I want. I'm gonna bring my space, my distance closer and I'm going to adjust my spacing closer. And now I'm gonna say preview. Preview means I wanna see it. Okay, so if I like that, I'm gonna say okay. So you can see that you can preview it as many times as you want until you get the look that you want. Okay, so now the last option here, this little empty daisy, I'm gonna to touch on when I talk to you or show you the My Design Center or the Design Center features of this machine because this ties in with the Design Center. So if I like this, and maybe it's a nice quilt block and I wanna save it to memory, I could touch memory and I could select, the machine asked me, do you wanna save it to the memory pocket of the machine, to a USB, or do you wanna Wi-Fi it? I'm gonna say, save it to the pocket of the machine so now it's saved. So now if I touch add, it would take me back to my main screen if I wanted to add writing, but I wanna go ahead and do embroidery. So this is my last screen for where I would actually put my hoop in, thread my thread and embroider my design. It's telling me up here to use my W embroidery foot the amount of stitches, how many minutes, the how many minutes depends on my speed that I've got my machine set at. It's five color thread changes. And it's telling me here, this is what we call our preview window. This is the first thing the machine is gonna stitch out and you need to get into the habit of looking at this preview window every time. You need to be aware of what your machine is gonna stitch out next. So the first thing it's gonna do is the sea crest. It's gonna take 20 minutes. When it's done with that, it's gonna do the lilac and then the warm gray, lavender, and blue. Another way of looking at what it's going to do is I could come in here. There's a little needle down here with stitches plus and minus. I could actually travel down color by color, spool by spool through my embroidery. And honestly, I do this quite often because I don't like surprises. I like to be prepared. Maybe I want to have my thread colors out and selected. Um, so I like to travel through my embroidery. And then when I'm done, if you come down here and select zero stitches, it takes you back to the beginning of your embroidery design. And then I opened a window. So I'm going to say OK and close it. I still have another couple of features. If I select layout, I still have the option to be able to move it. I have the option to be able to rotate it. And this here is my basting frame. We talked about the basting frame when I talked about the custom settings of the machine. So you can see here, I'm gonna deselect it. When I select it, it pulls up or it adds a frame a stitched basting frame to my design. And when I deselect the layout, you can see now that instead of the green being the first thing it's gonna stitch, it's gonna stitch my basting frame. And what that does is that it stitches 
your top fabric to your stabilizer. And if you have batting in between, it would stitch your top fabric your, uh, to your stabilizer. And if you have batting in between, it'll stitch all three layers together. So it's really, really nice to have because maybe you're not a really um, expert hooper yet and it, your, your fabric may be in there a little bit floppy or something. So stitching that all together and having that nice frame around your embroidery design before it stitches it really helps to um, prevent puckers and to be more successful with your embroidery design. So I often use my basting frame. Okay, I'm gonna open up my layout again. And the next selection here is a spool of thread with just some stitches running underneath it. So this is like a monochromatic. If I select this, watch what happens. All of my stitches go, mon my colors here go monochromatic. What, I, what I've done by selecting that is I'm telling the machine, I don't want you to stop between colors. So whatever color I put on my machine, the whole design is gonna be stitched out in that color. Why would you want that? Because quilters like that. If you've heard of red work or black work or blue work, you could select a design like the flowers that I had selected in the beginning and you wanna stitch it all out for your red work quilt, you wanna stitch it all out in red. You come through and you select that and the machine won't stop. It'll stitch the whole thing in red. So it's actually, I've used it several times and it's actually a pretty cool feature. Um, so I'm gonna deselect it now. The next one here is three spools of thread. When I select this one, what it does is say, I'm gonna try to keep it really simple. Say I have a design that's red, white, and blue and then I duplicate it and I have two of the same design that are red, white, blue, red, white, blue. So generally what the machine is gonna do is it is gonna stitch red and it's gonna stop. You rethread it white, it'll stop. Rethread it blue, it'll stop. And then you have to start all over again, red, white, blue. So when you select this feature, it's, co it's called a color sorting button. What it's gonna do is that it's gonna stitch the, the red and the red, and then it'll stop, and then you change the color of your thread. White, white, and blue, blue. So you just cut your time in half, um, and you just have to change your thread three times. Now, having said that, there may be designs that you pull up, for instance, anything that's really shaded, maybe an animal or a dog, that if there's shading involved, that selection might be grayed out because the machine is basically telling you, I can't color sort with this design. There's too much shading or it's too complicated. So you would have to just keep changing your thread. So remember the machine is, is helping you to be successful and also protecting itself, so to speak, at some times because um, I just can't do it that way. So it's gonna help you by guiding you. Okay, so we've gone through the features behind layout. So now, if I was ready to embroider, I could just put my foot down and my foot, my start light would turn green and I would be ready to embroider. Now I wanna talk about another couple of little buttons that we have down here that I haven't talked about. When I selected this button and I went through my colors, color by color, I can also, you can see on the bottom here that I can go through, I can travel through backwards, one stitch at a time, 10 stitches, 100 stitches, or forward in those increments. Why would you use that? If I was embroidering a design and all of a sudden, for some reason, I ran out of bobbin thread or my thread broke. I would have to do whatever I need to do, either put in a new bobbin or, you know, rethread my machine. And then normally what I do, normally what most embroiderers do, is it will open up this window and will go back 
five or six stitches minus one just tap it five or six times and so what you're doing is you're telling the machine i want you to go back five stitches and go over the section again where my thread broke so you're kind of reinforcing it a little bit so that's good to know what that's for and then i also have a setting here which um the machine defaults to selecting your end color trim cut and jump stitch trim cut i would leave those and not touch those buttons because the, the your machine cuts jump stitches and what does that mean it means that in between every color it it cuts and travels on and you want it to do that there's very few occasions where you don't want your machine to cut your stitches so go ahead don't don't change this leave this as is and up here i have the ability to change my tension i touched on tension a little bit when i was in the custom settings and i told you if your bobbin thread is coming up you can stop your machine and loosen your tension a little bit you have the ability to do it on this screen also now what's the difference between changing it here and changing it in your custom settings. If you loosen or tighten your tension in your custom settings up here, it stays that way until you change it back. If you change it here, you're only adjusting the tension for this particular design and it won't stay. So this is to this, this in your settings, you're changing it until, and it'll stay that way until you change it back. So either, either way, I gotta say I use both of them. You just have to remember to change it back because if you were to switch your machine off at the end of the day and you've changed settings in here, you really need to go back in there and put your default settings back on. So remember, don't, don't touch this and this you can adjust if you like, if you need to. Honestly, I very rarely adjust my tension, um, but it's nice to be able to adjust things if you want to, once you understand how, to, how your machine functions and you understand how to use your machine properly to be successful with your project. Now I'm gonna show you the embroidery fonts and the editing features for fonts. So I'm gonna come over to my home screen I'm going to select embroidery and I have tabs down here that I can open up. So I'm going to go to tab number two or category two and you'll see that all of your built-in fonts show up on my screen. I have a scroll bar here so I could scroll down a little further or scroll back up. The fonts down here you'll notice if you go into this section of the machine and play with your fonts and look at your fonts a little bit. These fonts 50 and 51 are very small fonts. But I'm gonna just come up here and I'm gonna select font 01. And right away, what pops up on my screen is the alphabet here, and then a tab is selected. This is uppercase. If I want lowercase, I can touch lowercase. This is where my numbers are, my punctuation marks, and then this is foreign languages. Okay, so I'm gonna open up my uppercase tab there. And you can see all of this is still grayed out because I have not yet made a selection of a letter. So I'm gonna start out, I'm gonna write happy birthday. So I'm gonna select the letter H, and then I'm gonna open up my lowercase and select P, P, Y. And then I'm gonna use a feature that I love and you'll use a lot if you enjoy monogramming or um, embroidering fonts. This is a drop down feature. I call it drop down. So what it does is I'm gonna open up my uppercase again. It drops down the next set of letters or word. So we can keep going here because I wouldn't have had room to continue writing across here. 
Okay, let's find the letters here. I'm going to write happy birthday. Okay. And you know what? I'm just going to delete a second. If I want to delete, I can just, there's a delete button here. And you can see that that red bar that's on the screen, it's, it's editing the letter before the red bar. You know what? I decided that I'm going to add a number. I'm going to say happy third birthday. So I'm going to really customize it, happy third, and then I'm going to do drop down again, and then on the next line. So you saw how easily I could delete and add if I wanted to. Remember, this machine is very user friendly. Um, you're not going to hurt it if you come to this screen and play with your letters and touch the buttons and you know ask yourself, okay, what does this do? Go ahead and select it. By the way, down here, do you see how it says LMS? This is where you would select large, medium, or small. By default, it goes to large. So this is the largest size of this font, but I could have changed it to medium or small. Okay, so what else do we have here? We have array. I can arc my word. I can arc it in the other direction. If I wanted it straight again, I could straighten it out. So pretty self-explanatory. If I wanted to, let me just close out of this window. Up here, I have another selection that this is a group and ungroup key. That's the way I explain it. So can you see that the group grouping is selected here and it's got a box around the whole word birthday? But say I wanted to ungroup it, I could touch this. And now you can see that my box changed. It's not around the whole word. It's not a group anymore. It's an individual letter. And the, the little box is around the letter Y. So say I wanted to see what it would look like. Can you see how that little red line is going backwards? I ungrouped it and I'm going back selecting an individual letter. So right now I've got the letter B selected. So just out of curiosity, I'm going to come in here. There's a little button down here that has the letter A in three different styles of fonts. I'm going to select that. Now watch what happens. It brings me back to my font selection, my original font selection, and I'm going to try something. I want to see what that letter B would look like in a different font. Can you see how it just, I selected just the letter B, and now I can go through my fonts and change it. So you can individualize each one, each word or each letter as you want with a different font. Maybe I like this one, no. So you see I'm customizing, see how nice and bold that one is. Um, I don't like that, don't like that. So I could pretty much go through the whole category if I wanted to, changing it and see if I like it better. My original one was 01, and I'm going to just take it back to 01. Now I'm going to show you something else. I'm going to travel back there, and I'm going to group it. And now I'm going to come down again. Can you see it grouped the whole word birthday? And I'm going to try, watch what happens here. I'm going to select font number 16. Because I grouped it, it changed my whole word to that font. So again, I can preview it with all different fonts by grouping it. So it's kind of a nice feature and very easy to use. I'm going to take it back to the original one. So this is group and ungroup for individual editing. 
And this one is selecting an individual letter, traveling to that letter that you want to edit. Okay, let's go back down here. So I can adjust my spacing between my letters. I can stretch them apart or squeeze them together. Maybe if it's not quite fitting, you may want to squeeze them together. I'm going to leave it as is. This here, the next one after spacing is alignment. So this is right alignment, left alignment, and then center alignment. I want it all centered. Um, so I'm going to leave it as it was, and it's highlighted as center alignment. So when, you, when you're playing or you're in this section of the machine, do go ahead and test these features so that you can see what you can do with them. This little bar here, this selection here is a space. It's a spacer. So if I wanted to write happy third on one line, I could, I, after the Y, I would have touched this and it would have inserted a space um, between my words. And then of course you have your delete button here. You can travel back and forth to the letter or the word that you want to delete. If I like what I'm doing, I can go ahead and set it. Remember the bottom right of your screen, you're working towards embroidering it. Okay, so now I'm gonna open up my edit here and I don't have a lot of options here for changing anything. So that's because I did most of my changes in the first screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that out. Here you have um, the ability to save that to memory if you want. If I want to go ahead and embroider it, I can just go ahead and embroider it. And this is my last screen where it tells me I'm going, this is my preview window here. First thing the machine is going to stitch out is happy. It's going to take six minutes. The next thing it'll stitch out is third. And then the next one it'll stitch out is birthday. And there's a break in between. The machine is going to stop. So if you wanted to change the color of your thread in between, you could or you could just stitch it all out in one color. And to do that, if I didn't want the machine to stop, I would go ahead and select monochromatic. And so now all of this is grayed out. The machine is telling me I'm not gonna have any color stops. I'm not gonna stop until I've stitched everything out in one color. So that's a nice feature to have um, so that you don't have to keep pressing start again. Now I'm going to show you some more editing features for embroidery fonts. I'm going to go ahead and come in. I'll select category three. I am going to write the word dog. I'm going to keep it simple. Now, if I had spelt that word wrong and say I meant to write dig, instead of dog, and I wanted to go back and correct myself, I could travel back to the letter O, and I could delete it, and I could insert the I. I'm going to leave it as dog for right now, but I wanted you to see how easy it is to go back and make a correction. Okay, so I'm not going to do any more editing in here. I'm going to go ahead and set it and move towards my embroidery editing box here. So I'm going to open this up and now you can see I have some editing features that I can use um, in this screen. So let's talk about this one. If I select that, it takes me back here and I have the option again to change or edit any of my letters if I wanted to add or correct something. If I open up this one, the one that says multicolor, what's going to happen, I'm going to go ahead and touch embroidery so you see, normally when you select a word like this, it's going to stitch it all out in one color. And so it would be the three letters in one stitch out, so to speak. But because I said multicolor, it separated the letters. So now I have the opportunity 
if I wanted to embroider the letter D in red, the letter O in yellow, and the letter G in blue, it's put color stops in there by selecting multicolor. So that's a nice feature to have. Um, so that's this one here. I'm going to deselect it. Here's another one that has to do with fonts. So this one here, you can see that it pulled up a little knife. That's actually a little knife there for cutting or separating your um, letters in your font. This here is to make your knife travel, so to speak, or select a letter. So I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to say, I'm going to select cut. And what it has done is that it has cut away or ungrouped the letter D. So now I can play with it. I can be creative. Um, once I have it where I want it, say I want to put it there. I could say, now you see what I'm touching here? This is my select. This is where I select what element in my embroidery design I want to edit. So I moved over here and now my knife is between O and G and I can say, okay, cut it. So now look at what I've got. I can really play with it and put my letters wherever I want. And when I'm done cutting and editing, I can just say, okay, embroidery. And again, I can stitch it out. So pretty easy, pretty, um, very user friendly. So I encourage you to try these. And I think I pretty much covered the embroidery font features. Now I'm going to show you how to merge an embroidery design and a monogram. So I'm coming to my embroidery screen. I'm going to enter and select category number 16. I'm going to select number four. This is a beautiful, beautiful design. I'm going to set it. And there it is on my screen. There's my color stitch out. So now on the bottom of my screen, I'm going to select add and it takes it me back to my home screen. I'm going to go to category number three. And these are my monograms. I'm going to select number two, and I'll just select the letter A, and I'm going to set it. So right away, I can tell that the letter A is way too big and it doesn't fit. So I need to do some sizing here to make it work. So I'm going to open up my med edit. Now, looking at this screen, the last thing I pulled in was the monogram, so my red box is around my letter A. I know I need to size it. I'm going to go into size. I'm going to activate my recalculating software and I'm going to size it right down because that's a big monogram. I can tell that it still is too big. So what I'm going to do is size up my embroidery design. Now this, so I'm going to say, okay, this here is a selector. Can you see how the red box is moving between the elements on my screen? Sometimes instead of just touching something, if you can't, if something is covered up or under another embroidery design, you can use your selector here. So I'm going to select my um, beautiful embroidery, my roses, because I want to edit that. I want to make it bigger. So I'm going to come in here, activate the software, and I'm going to size it up. Let it go. I can still see that, you know what? I'm going to size it up a little bit more. That's looking better. So now I'm going to touch. You see how it's grabbing my frame? I don't want to grab my frame. I want to grab my letter A so I can move it. Sometimes with fonts, when they're cursive, it's um, you can't really tell what the center of the design is. So now I'm sizing it down. And I'm still, I can tell that I want to make that design just a little bit bigger. When you hear that little double boom, it means I'm maxed out. So I'm going to go like this and look, it actually fits perfectly. So now I'm done. I've sized it. 
to make it work and go to embroidery. If I want to save that to the memory pocket of my machine, I would touch memory and save it here to the pocket and just in case I want to stitch it out again. So that's how easy it is to merge a monogram with an embroidery design. Now let's take a look at the frames that are built into your machine. I'm going to go ahead and select it. And right away on the top of my screen are the shapes. So I can toggle around here. And you can see every time I select a shape, the stitch out of that shape appears down below. So I'm going to go ahead and select just the square shape. And I'm going to select category number six. So right away, it sets it up in front of my, on my screen. So now my frame is on my editing screen, so to speak. So I'm going to go ahead and add. And I think if you have a brother embroidery machine, you will probably have Disney designs built in. So I'm just going to go ahead and select Mickey. And so now Mickey is in the center of my frame and you can see that my frame is too big or too small for Mickey. So I'm going to go ahead and edit it. I'm going to size my frame up. So to do that, you can see the red box. I'm going to use my selector and I can see now that my selector has framed my square. I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to size it up. That looks pretty good. Okay. So I'm going to say, okay. And now I want to show you the grouping key. There's a little button down here right next to select. Remember your select selects the element that you want to edit. So when I touch this, this is, this is for selecting to group. So when I touch this, it groups or selects, first of all, my two elements in my design. If I want to deselect, I would touch here. So I'm going to select both of them and I'm going to say OK. And now I'm going to select this. This groups what I selected. So why would I want to do that? Because maybe now I want to move it as a group. And you see how it's all together in one. If I hadn't grouped it together and I went to move, it would either move my Mickey out of the way or my frame. So I, I selected both elements, I grouped them together, and now they work together as a group. So then I would say OK. And if I'm ready to embroider or I want to save it to memory, um, I could save it to memory or I could touch embroidery and I could stitch it out. And remember, the Disney designs are built into a brother machine. Now I want to show you another way of using your select and group key and why you would want to use it. So I am in embroidery here and I'm going to select category number 10. I'm going to select embroidery design number six and you can see that it's a small flower, embroidery flower. So I'm going to set it. And I have on my screen, I've divided my screen into quarters um, because it'll make it easier to create my design that I want to create. So I've dragged my flower up here and you can see I've lined up the red edges with the lines on my screen, my dividing lines. I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to drag it over here, line it up on the center lines again. And I'm going to select, I'm going to select my um, mirror image key. I just want to line it up a little bit better. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to select my duplicate again, and I've got a third flower. I'm going to drag it down here, place it in that quadrant, and I'm going to select it a fourth time, line it up with the center and I'm going to mirror image it. So now I've got, I've created a little design in the center of my space. Now say I wanted to create a quilt block and use my stippling. If I was to select stippling right now, 
look at what happens. It throws a stippling design around my last embroidery design. And if I was to say preview, you can see that it's added stippling around my last design, my last flower here. I'm going to magnify it so you can see. And then it's added the stippling over the rest of my design. So we don't want that, right? So let's go back. I'm going to undo. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select all of them and group them together so that the machine reads this as one design. And then so I've selected all four blocks. Now I'm going to group them. Now when I come down here, it adds stippling around all four of them. So you can see that it's added stippling inside my the center of my design. If I don't want that, well, first of all, what I'm going to do is select the hoop size that I want. Say I want a six by six hoop and I don't want stippling in here, I'm going to move the distance away. And can you see what happened now? It's pushing away the stippling and it's created, it's removed the stippling from inside the design. So now when I see preview, remember preview means I wanna see it. Let's see what progress we've made. Now it looks really nice, I don't have stippling on top of my other three flowers and I have a nice area in the center here. So I have a nice six by six quilt block that I've created. Now let me show you another category in the embroidery section of your machine. As we come down the side here of your embroidery designs, we have different categories. I'm gonna open up category number five. In this section, I have decorative stitching, I have buttonholes, and I have small embroidery designs that I can use to embellish around buttonholes. So you may wonder why would I want to do a buttonhole in the hoop? And actually, you could, if you were creative and you wanted to embroider maybe on a pillow and you wanted to weave some satin ribbon on the front of the pillow and surround it with little embroidery designs, it's just an idea, you could embroider your buttonholes on the front of the pillow, space them nicely and weave ribbon around and embroider around them. So there are uses for um, buttonholes in your hoop. But let's come into category number one, the decorative stitching. So as you can see, I have a lot of decorative stitching. And remember, these are the decorative stitches in the embroidery section of the machine. So lots and lots of stitches and as you go down the stitches do get bigger towards the bottom so you can see here so i want to show you one way i happen to have just stitched out this one it's number 88 and as you can see when i select it it comes up on my screen just one pattern so to speak it would take one minute to stitch this out so i'm going to go ahead and set it and I'm going to open up my edit screen and I'm going to come in here to continuous embroidery. This is one of the easy ways that I use my decorative stitching. So I opened it up and you can see that the machine by default selects the um, design to go vertically as opposed to horizontally. So the first thing that I normally do is I move it all the way up and then I'm going to move it over to the side. To the far corner here and then i'm going to come down my screen a little bit and you can see that i have a plus on top of my pattern and a plus below my pattern i'm going to touch that and it adds another design or decorative stitch underneath my pattern and i can touch it again and again and now i know that i've kind of fill the side of my hoop so there's no room to stitch another one. But So what can I do now? I'll come over here and select horizontal and then I'll add to the right. Can you see how it duplicated what I had on the left? 
So think of all the decorative stitching that you have in your machine. And I like to use this to create an area fill, similar to what you have in the design center. I like to fill a hoop with an embroidery design, and this is sometimes the way I do it. So you can see now I've got, I've filled my whole hoop with a really nice kind of Southwestern um, design. And now when I say, okay, and embroidery, I'm ready to stitch it out. And I actually have one stitched out that I'm gonna show you. have it right here and look at how cool this is now I'm going to show you how easy it is to take a design off your USB stick and bring it up into your embroidery machine so I have my USB in my top port attached to my machine so I'm going to open up embroidery and instead of selecting a category that's built in I'm going to come down here and select my USB. So you can see that I have folders in here. I have a lot of designs on, on this stick. I can scroll through. I have individual ones on my stick. I'm going to go back and I'm going to go ahead and select um, one and open up one of my files. So here I have a one called Vivian Monogram and I have three inch, I have different sizes of this monogram design that I purchased. So I'll open up the four inch. And here are my four inch designs. So I could select the letter D. It comes up right away, set it, and I'm ready to embroider it. It's very easy. So now let's take a look at how the embroidery foot with the drop light feature works so well on this machine to help you with positioning a design. I have an embroidery design pulled up on my screen. I'm going to go ahead and select embroidery. Now you can see right away that there's a little like a green cross in the center. That is the center of my embroidery design. Now what I'm going to do is come up here and touch this on the top left of your screen is your W embroidery foot. When you touch that, a little LED drop light is switched on and is in my hoop. So that little light is indicating exactly where that little cross is or where my needle drop is in the center of my hoop. Now I want to show you another feature that you can use for a precise positioning. I'm gonna go ahead and touch that button, and this is going to trace the outline of my design. So first of all, I'm gonna come up here, and you can see the embroidery hoop moved, and with that little LED light, it's outlining the size of my um, embroidery that I selected. So I could also, if I wanted to touch it again, I could touch it again. If I wanted to do it in slow motion, if I was trying to be really accurate to position this design somewhere, I could come down to this box down below and say I selected bottom left. Do you see how my cross moved over to the bottom left? And my hoop also moved. And over here is the bottom left, exactly where it is on my screen, is where it is on my hoop. So I could come around and kind of in slow motion, so to speak, where I wanna go, have the positions pointed out to me very clearly on my hoop. When you're done and you know that you have your design where you wanna place it, always go ahead and touch the center again to bring it back to the center of your hoop. And then touch okay and you're ready to embroider. 
I hope you enjoyed this instructional video on the embroidery side of the Brother Stellaire XJ1 and Babylock Altair sewing and embroidery machines. As I said before, everything I showed you in this video also applies to the Brother Stellaire XE1 and Babylock Meridian embroidery only machines. If you have any questions, please be sure to stop by our store or give us a call. You can also comment below. We're here to help you get the most out of your machines. These machines are available in store only, so we hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching and happy embroidering.